Yesterday we kicked off our Park to Prem adventure, looking for our first job as manager and while ultimately finding our first job as manager, we are here at Guernsey, currently in the relegation zone. We're going to have to turn things around. The good news for us is though, well, I was going to say the good news for us. The good news is it's December and there's time to turn it around. Bad news, first games against the team in second. I don't know if there is any good news. I've not yet looked at the team. I've not yet sorted the tactics. I've not even looked at kind of the scouting situation or like if there's any players to be recommended. There's no one to be recommended. Yeah, we've got a hell of a lot of stuff to sort out today. But before we do that, let's run that intro. Yes, folks, how is it going? Welcome back to Park to Prem. I feel like today is officially episode one here at Guernsey. And well, as you've already heard, there's quite a lot to sort out today. Now, of course, if you missed last episode, do go check it out. The job hunt was rather fun. It was a bit adventurous. And well, ultimately, we've landed out here off the south coast of England on a small little island. I mentioned it briefly yesterday, but I've launched a new merch store today. I know, kind of a big deal. We've got Park to Prem mugs, shirts, hoodies as well. There is also some more general work the space stuff. If you want to support the channel, if you enjoy what I do, check that out and code park to prem at checkout gets you 5% off all orders on the store. So check that out. Support's appreciated. And whilst you're down there, maybe leave a like on the video. Now at the end of last episode, we looked at our staff to kick things off today. Just a little look at our facilities. So you can get an idea of the lie of the land. Our stadium is Foots Lane, which is an athletic stadium. I believe it's the only stadium on the whole of the island of Guernsey. 5,000 fans can fit in it, 720 seated. That's not too shabby. And like I mentioned last episode, we do have 500 season ticket holders. As a result of that, our bank balance is in quite a good place. I was a little bit curious about where all this money that we have comes from. You can see here exactly where it comes from. £71,000 made so far this year from season ticket sales. Almost 40000 as well from gate receipts. We are a very well supported team at this level. Naturally, when you're the only team on an island, you do tend to dominate the market somewhat. And so right now, our current season expenditure is £108,000. Our current income is 174000 So that perhaps goes a little way to explain why we have a rather healthy wage budget, £875 to spend if we so wish. I have also just noticed we're currently scouting the whole of England which, I mean, that's a lot of money a month. I'm going to lower this. What is our scouting budget? It's 95,000. That's a lot of money. 95,000 pounds is our scouting budget. The temptation just to rejig that into transfer budget right away is kind of real. But actually, before we do that, everyone put your sensible hats on. It's very easy, isn't it, when you realise you have some money in Football Manager to go wild. We should go look at our current squad. And here is our current team. It's an interesting team. It's got some really talented players. It's also got some players who are a lot less talented. Ryan Zico Black is 41 years old. 41! No idea if this player still plays for Guernsey. He's been here apparently since before the club was even formed. So fair play to him. He's kicking around at 41. His contract's up at the end of the year. Not going to be extending it. Let's have a look at our best player, Carlos Canna. This man is listed as our key player. He is the player with the highest current ability star rating in the eyes of our assistant, who, to be fair, probably doesn't have the best judging player ability. But on the face of it, he actually looks really good. 13 acceleration, 13 pace, some really nice determination, can play at centre attacking mid. Worth remembering that kind of sixes and sevens and eights, that's actually very good for us right now. Our second best player is a man who's an international for the British Virgin Islands, Tyler. Forbes. He's on loan from Weymouth. His loan ends um, at the start of April. That's a weird date. Can we loan him for longer? Um, no. Um, Weymouth feel he should be tested in a different environment. What does that even mean? So our second best player actually contracted to the club is another striker. So I feel like we've got loads of firepower. We've got here William Vazakili. I hope I've said that right. Will. William, I'm sorry if I've got that wrong. This man has free finishing and is a striker. Now, if we ignore the free finishing, he actually looks like he could be, dare I say, reasonable. I mean, ignore the passing, ignore the work rate, ignore the finishing. He's quick. And at this level, speed is just quite good. 
I think. At least it was. That's my theory. I suppose William's going to be the man to prove or disprove it. Gavain looks like a good little athletic centre mid. I will say, not the most defensive player in the world. I will say, he's very consistent, he loves important matches, and he's naturally fit. So, there's some positives. He's 22 as well. Maybe he's the future. Of our better players, a lot of them are to attackers, I'm realising. The best defender we've got is Callum Rose. 24 years old, looks very good. Um, he's currently not on a contract. He's on one of these kind of pay-as-you-go contracts. It's like the old phone contracts you used to get. Can I just give him a deal? Can we, can we just talk? He wants to be a star player. Um, this might be premature. What does he want? 250 quid. Our current highest earner's on 100. Not giving him that. At 24 years old, he actually looks like a good little centre-back for this level. He's not really slow. 11 jumping reach, 11 heading. With that bravery and aggression, he might be a bit of a set-piece weapon. Finally, I have found a creative player in our team, Kieran Mahan. This guy is a bit of a playmaker, plays at centre-mid, can play out on the right, can play at centre-attacking mid. 10 passing, 10 vision, 9 flair... Oh, he could be very good for us. Now, rather than run through the entire team, I think the best thing for me to do right now is work out a formation that our players fit into and then run you through a rough intro of the rest of the players that make up our starting 11. Just as I'm going through sorting my team, has just occurred to me, every single player's contract expires at the end of this year. That could be interesting. So I've had a little bit of a fiddle with our team. I think this is our best way to set up for the year. Truth be told, we don't have a lot of great players in the wide area. And also, we don't really have a whole lot of right-back options or left-back options. In fact, the defence looks very weak on paper. But then when I actually looked at the matches just before I took over, um, goal scoring looks like a problem. I think everything's just a problem here at the moment. I mean, we're in 17th. So when it comes to the team, we're going to go with Forbes, who's in on loan from Weymouth alongside Fazza Curley. Of course, Fazza Curley has free finishing. So as a result, we're trying him as a pressing forward on support. I'm aware he has one bravery and not very good work rate. We have to make compromises here. Now, because Fazza Curley is playing on a support duty, I want to sentiment on attack that's going to overlap a little bit. Matt Loring, I thought was going to be our left winger. We don't have a right winger. I didn't want to do anything too asymmetric. It upsets me to look at asymmetric formations, at least at this moment in time. In 10 seasons time when I'm playing asymmetric, don't call me a hypocrite. But yes, Matt's a very good winger. And with that in mind, I think actually playing him as a centre mid on attack could work quite nicely, making some overlapping runs. The big issue with this entire midfield setup is we've got lots of pacey creative players not really a ball winner of sorts. When it comes to the defence, it is a weakness. Our goalkeeper is Jordan Kelly. Right now, he's on a 6.61 rating for the season, which isn't great. But five clean sheets in 13, I want to say is respectable. I am playing with wingbacks on support. Neither of these players can play as wingbacks, but with us playing narrower, I need someone to provide the width. And at least with Marsh out at right back, who, you know what? He's got good physicals. Ignore, ignore the technicals. And also with Tobin out on the left-hand side, who again has good physicals, Ignore the technicals. That is that's that should be the title of today's episode. Ignore the technicals on the wing backs. They have pace, they can run. I need someone to provide width. I just have to hope that at this level they'll do the job adequately. Having evaluated the team, I think it's kind of obvious. Fullbacks, defensive midfielders, two things that are definitely an order of the day. At centre back, Callum Rose is the better of our two centre backs. Alongside him, we are going with Tobin. You look at his mentals, yeah, four composure, four bravery, ignore those. The real issue is that he's got five jumping reach and he's 176 centimetres tall. If we come up against any proper non league brutes or forwards, Frank is going to get bullied. In terms of team instructions, like I said, our midfield isn't going to be good at winning the ball, but when we have it, I think we're going to be able to move the ball around quite nicely. With that in mind, we're going to look to play the ball through the middle where we have the majority of our players, play at a high tempo with standard uh, kind of passing directness. I am going to look to pass into space. There is going to be open areas, hopefully in the wide areas, for our midfielders in that kind of left and right centre mid position to run onto. And also, we do have a pretty quick team here. In transition, nothing too complicated. Want to get it to the deep line play when we can. I do feel like Mahan, at least to start things off, should be okay as a little bit of a distributor, an out ball that our goalkeeper can go for on the regular, and out of possession, it's football manager. So we're going to trigger presses often, play a high line, try and force some mistakes out of non-league defences. Now, of course, I say all of this, we've got Northwood who are in second in six days' time. There is a real temptation to go mad with transfers, to go mad signing players. But you know what? 
I think to kick things off, show a little bit of faith with the people that are here, let them prove their worth, see how they get on. I am going to have to walk away from this Callum Rose contract and potentially upset him. I'm, I'm sure he'll be fine. He, he'll get over it, right? I do need to pick a captain. Our current captain is Simon Giel, who I'll be honest... I've not even looked at during any of the team selection process. He's 39 years old. I will not be renewing his contract, but at the same time, I don't really want to upset anyone with it being my first day in the job. Given the fact everyone's contract's up at the end of the year, there's going to be a whole new team in by the end of the year. Maybe we'll keep William around. I actually quite like William. Despite his free finishing, I think everything else about him looks like by, well, what I've seen in the past, a really good non-league forward. Apparently, Josh Addison, our backup goalkeeper, would benefit from training of his first-touch dribbling and technique. I'm inclined to agree. Has just been brought to my attention. We don't have a head of youth development. I could go with one of their suggestions. I'm not going to do that, though. I'm going to farm my own. I've gone in with 15s for everything. Probably a tiny bit unrealistic. Uh... Let's lower this all slightly. I, I say slightly. I've had to put everything to sixes to even get a result. We've got Darren Bernard. I think actually was the one recommended. Yeah, he, he, he was the one recommended. All right, Darren, do you want to be my head of youth development? I'll give you 150 quid for two years. I have to pay 1.5 thousand pounds in compensation. We've got big bucks. We can afford that. So one thing to note, we do have an affiliation with Bristol City. We can give them a friendly every single year as a championship team. That should provide us with a little bit of money, which is always good. Alex Scott, who is one of the best young players in football manager this year, plays for Bristol City and is their key player at the age of 19 he actually started at Guernsey so it's a relationship that goes way back with Bristol City I'm hoping that we'll get a few players as good as Alex Scott come from here now youth intakes and maybe we can keep them around that would be nice you know what we've talked about affiliates we've done a meeting we've picked a tactic and team I'm ready to take on Northwood it's a big moment I have to introduce myself to the club I'd like to introduce myself as manager but it's not a it's not a great start. I understand that some players might have doubts about your experience, but we're all prepared to give you a chance. You know what? I was going to make some promises. Not even going to try my luck. Targets for this season. Uh, I think we can stay in this division. They're happy with that. Brilliant. That's what I want to hear. I've updated the code of conduct. Everyone's happy. Look at that. They came in pessimistic. They're leaving encouraged. I'm a motivator. So Tyler Forbes, the guy on loan from Weymouth, he's our current top goal scorer. His loan is up in April. Can I just sign him? Maybe. that You know what? We're going to try and make our first signing and it's going to be a player who's already here. I'm not doing the interview. He wants £325 to 500 and... Let's have a chat. Let's have a chat. You know what? We'll see We'll see what he's thinking. I'll make you an important player. He wants a non-contract deal on £325. What if I give you £75 in appearance, but I'll give you £100 a week, like, to start? He hates me. But Tyler, we've not played a game together yet. I don't want to start this relationship off on rocky footing. You're the best goal scorer in the club. You're only in on loan. I'm giving you the potential here to stay here for the long haul. I'm going to lock him part-time. He might hate me for this. Okay, we, we might be getting to a yearly wage rise of 25%. Absolutely not. Remove that. I'll give you £120 a week. That could have gone better. Uh, I'll, I'll see you for the match, Tyler. First signing as manager, Darren Barnard. We have a head of youth development, folks. The, the progress we've made under me, truly remarkable. I can ask Darren to recommend signings. Darren, let me know who's good. Surely Darren knows some good players. Darren, where were you before? Camberley Town in the Combined Counties Premier. Oh, wait, no, that's where he played. He was previously at Badshot Lear. Or at least I, I think that's how you meant to say the team's name. Their key player is a New Zealand under-17 international. He can play right back. I need right backs. He was playing in New Zealand. He's now playing for Bad Shot Leah. He's available on a free. I did notice he is on £230 a week. Maybe he'll take a wage cut to join us. This could be a common problem. Apparently, our performance in the league is concerning. Shout out, by the way, to Paul Brakes. He has turned up for this press conference. He's the only journalist who's shown up. Um... I don't want to talk to him. Send, send assistant. Exmouth Town have made an offer for our leg. I'll tell you what, they're going to have to offer more than that for my leg. They've offered zero pounds. No. 
It's a little bit concerning, isn't it, when your training performance recap shows there's been no good performances and then your club captain is the, the worst performer. I'll tell you what, I really do need to turn things around here. The board expectations for this game is that we try and be competitive. The supporters are predicting a certain defeat. It's a good level of self-belief we've got here at Guernsey. Okay, first game in charge, taking on Northwood. We're at home. They are currently in second. This is not going to be easy. Already talked a little bit about our team here. Forbes and Fazza Curley, I'm hoping are going to have good performances up top. Kanha is our key man. He's going to be the creative force, I'm hoping, that links the midfield to the attack. Of course, we've got wingbacks that can run but can't cross a ball or, in fact, do anything with a ball, for that matter, in Marsh and Tobin. Kind of nervous about them. At the back, Kelly in goal. Not a sweeper keeper by any means. Two passing, one first touch. What have I got him set to? Just a regular goalkeeper. That's sensible, isn't it? On the bench, we'll acknowledge the players here. Jamie Dodd, he can jump. He's angry. He's aggressive. He'll do a job for us on off the bench if need be. We've got Talm de la Mer. Fantastic name. Not so good at actually playing the whole football thing. David Rahoy is a versatile sentiment option. We'll go with versatile. He's 38. He's got very good mentals. Some okay technicals. Just can't really run. In terms of attacking flair, Thomas Dodds is one of our two options on the bench. This man can play on the wings. Obviously, I'm not playing with wingers at the moment, but if we start panicking during the game, we might throw him on in the wide area. And the last player that we've got, of course, is Robbie Legg. He had some interest in him already. If Forbes isn't going to stick around after his loan, maybe Robbie Legg is going to be the man to fill his spot as the poacher in our team. Of course, it goes without saying, if you want your game to look like my game looks, because I appreciate if you're tuning in for the first time in this episode one, everything looks a bit different. Check out the links down in the description to all the custom mods I use for layouts, including, of course, the latest TCS skin with all the lovely match details. Is this our stadium? Is this our, this is home, everyone? We've got some lovely terrace houses all around, some kind of skyscraper in the middle. And oh my word, it's raining. We're on extended highlights. We don't do that around here. Lowest height, max zoom. I'm ready for football man. Actually, we need, need to up the pace too. Bit concerned. Halfway through the first half, nothing's happened. I mean, at the same time, we've not conceded. So I suppose that's a positive. I am really looking forward to the non-league shenanigans that goes on in football manager. Stuff just looks weird down at this level. They've got a player through... That is, I, mm, I mean, there you go. There's exhibit A. <laughs> Things look weird at this level. Perfect. The game, game's done a good job of reinforcing my point there. I'm still surveying our new stadium. I've seen worse looking stadiums. Have we got a gazebo? I've not spotted a gazebo yet. That's an essential park to prem necessity. Forbes, if he scores, I'll give him a new contract. If he'll talk to me. Tobin at left back. Can he get forward and put it in? Frank Tobin, he's our centre back. Oh, wait, no, that's Harry Tobin. We have two Tobins. I'm learning. We've scored. Forbes now is seven for the season. Two Tobins in the defence is going to get confusing, isn't it? I mean, Tobin H puts into Forbes. He heads it in. British Virgin International. Wait, Br British Virgin Islands <laughs> International. Can we re-record that bit? What's that editing, Jack? The whole sequence has to stay in the video. Great. Right, you know what? Well, 1 0 up. I could praise the players and tell them they're wicked. I'm not. That was not a classic first half. We've got a goal from a, a cross in. Let's be honest, it wasn't anything special. We have taken the lead with our only shot on target. Now we've got another set piece. Loring whips it in. Dunton clears it for them. Only as far as Mahan. Can he keep it alive for us? Mahan, of course, our deep line playmaker. The, the non league Perlo, I think, is what they're calling them. What is our defence doing? Where is our defence? They're through. Right, this is on you, Kelly. Can he make a stop? No. No, he can't. Now, I'm going to say what we're all thinking. Not sure what any of the defending was in that sequence of events. I mean, he almost got back, to be fair, the defender, but it is 1 1. Northwood. I mean, they are second in the league, but we have just gifted them a goal there, haven't we? Kanner, he's given away the ball. I thought we were going to go and score immediately. Instead, we've given the ball away. Oh, don't do anything stupid, Tobin. I don't know if I trust any of these players yet. Loring with the ball, gives it to Mahan. He's going to play it forward towards Forbes. Forbes, you're our star man. Seven goals, you're the British Virgin Islands International. Lumped from one end to the other. I'll tell you what, the game's back, isn't it? Watching this, he's just been lumped from one end to the other. Salmons for Northwood. Plays forward to Akko. 
Can he finish it? He's going wide. Do not foul him. He pulls it back. Tobin mops up the pieces. Now we counter. It's end-to-end -end stuff here. Faz Curly. He's got free finishing. Does he care? I don't know what his passing is, but it must be just as bad. Forbes has got the ball. Hits it. <laughs> what is that? What is that? I mean, considering why he's got international caps for the British Virgin Islands, I should have given him more money. I'm signing him. I'll give him the 200 quid or whatever it was he wanted. What was that? Gorvan wins the ball, gives it to Forbes, and he just can't be arsed to run. Sees the keeper off his line, smashes it in. It's 2-1. Set piece for us now. It's in a wide area. Look at all the players in the box. Loring is going to be the man to try and put it on a plate for someone. Back post. Rose is there. Callum Rose scores his first goal of the season. We're 3-1 up. I tell you what, we've not played pretty football. It's not been great, but somehow we find ourselves two goals to the good. And I don't think there is a gazebo in the stand. I've, I've now seen the whole stadium. No gazebos. Okay, you know what? I'm going to make a couple of changes here because we've got players who are on yellows and, well, maybe walking a tightrope. I've brought on Rihoy. I've brought in Lemaire. Just want to take off players on bookings. I don't want to go down a man here. I have got one sub left in my back pocket. Of course, at this level, we only get five sub options. So versatility is quite useful in the backups. Oh, well, they've got a corner here. We've scored a set piece. Are they going to return the favour? Not on this occasion. Jones heads over. Four minutes of added time. I mean, it's not quite the World Cup with its 10 minutes of added time, is it? But with a two-goal margin, surely this game is done now. Young for Norwood. I mean, if we could get a win on our debut, it'd be absolutely amazing. Jemmet Hudson in a wide area. There is no marking in the middle going on. And I'll tell you what, Ago probably should have scored that. There might be more to this, although maybe it's going to be them with it. Stewart plays it forward to Jemmet Hudson, who hits it against the woodwork. I feel like 3-1 is very, very, well, flattering. 30 seconds left of this game. We're two goals to the good. Tobin's just pushed a man off the ball. What are we doing? What are we doing, Frank? I mean, we're just giving them a free kick. Hopefully this isn't going to come back to buy us. I mean, they do have to score two goals in what remains. And I'll tell you what, we've not seen a lot from Jordan Kelly. That was an okay save. I've hyped up a bit too much. But you know what? I'll hype us up all I want. We've just won 3-1. Ignore the XG story. The XG doesn't win you games. Look at this. Load of rubbish. Deserved winners. We probably got a bit lucky. We've scored three goals from 0.64. But I'll tell you what, that's what we're known for here at Guernsey. Clinicalness. Tyler Forbes, by the way, 9.2 rating. I've just realised he's going to end up going on international duty at points during this season, and it's really going to be annoying. That is about as good a win as you're likely to see, lads. Go and have a good time. Go and party. After that win, they, they deserve to. Does it take us outside the drop zone? I'll tell you what, it blooming does. Take that, Thatcham Town. We're up to 16th. This is the start of my apology to Forbes. I've just praised him for his game. You played amazingly, mate. 9.2, two goals to his name. Why didn't I offer him the money that he asked for earlier? As good as we were, player of the week in the league was Jordan Cox. Can I just sign Jordan Cox? No one wants to join me. I've got an idea. Park to Prem fans know. Sonny Best. Absolutely no interest. That's very firmly worded, isn't it? Something tells me I might need to work on my recruitment strategy between now and next episode. So just having a little look at the league table, we are now in 16th. 18 games played, it's a 38-game season, so still 20 games to try and maybe turn things around a little bit. As far as today could have gone, I don't think it's too bad. We've got a tactical system of sorts. Yeah, we don't have any defensive midfielders. We're going to play tick attacker football all the way up the Football League. Thank you so much for watching today's video. Just a little reminder about the merch. The link is at the top of the description. Go check that out. Code Park to Prem at checkout for 5% off. If you've enjoyed today's video, just a little reminder, leave a like. And until next time, take it easy. It's me, Jack, and I'll see you tomorrow. I'm out.